After losing a couple of friends and colleagues in the El Reno, Oklahoma tornado on May 31st, 2013, I uh, decided to take it, you know, a different direction. That direction? Revolutionized storm chasing by flying autonomous aircraft inside the twister. Warren, along with Brent Boothiller and Nolan Lunsford, make up the Sirens Project. Decided to uh, implement unmanned aerial vehicles and unmanned technology in order to study tornadoes from a safe distance. Right on. Yeah. So basically, the Sirens Project is just an effort to better understand tornadoes and hopefully build better structures based off the data we get and also improve tornado forecasting. The sturdy carbon fiber and Kevlar airframe is also used by farmers keeping an eye on their crops. Unibody aircraft, much like a B-2 stealth bomber, come from a manufacturer called Ag Eagle. They have been uh, tested in over 50 mile an hour wind gusts. But to withstand the mighty winds of a tornado, the team needs to modify the engines for more power. We might sacrifice 10, 15 minutes of flight time, but we'll gain 30, 40 percent increase in top speed, which is extremely crucial when uh, punching through low-level wind shear uh, in these super itself thunderstorms. The wings come as a blank uh, frame, so they don't come with any electronics. This cable is actually what's going to plug into the motor controller that will deliver all the battery power. So this is kind of the most important part to get right. If I have any air bubbles or gaps or anything on the solder, that will show up in the air and bring us down. Now it is ready to go downstairs for assembly. The first and most important component to install is a flight controller called a PixHawk. We only have uh, two control services and so they act as both the elevator when they both go up and down and the ailerons for roll when they move in opposite direction. They then install the GPS and a telemetry link with an eight kilometer range. Telemetry link, we're able to see our live stream of data, but with this uh, adapter, what it allows us to do is actually take this unit and uh, plug it into our Android device, and then we can view it from our phone mobily. If the system fails, this unit will take over and transmit the data via cellular network. So this is the first time this wing's gonna get power, so we have our fire extinguisher handy in case uh, anything goes, <laughs> goes wrong, so. If white smoke and weird noises start coming up, then uh, we did it. We can blame Brent. We can blame him. Beautiful. No white smoke. Yep. No weird noises. What? Yeah, I think it's ready to fly. See what she does. Yeah, we won't be able to fully test or fully push the aircraft's potential until we actually intercept. Uh, we're extremely confident, though, in our, uh, our power and in our speed that we can handle just about whatever the tornado can throw at us. They're launched via a military bungee cord launcher. It's a sliding rail type design. And it's spring loaded, yeah, foot pedal. It's a very high powered launcher. It actually comes off the launcher almost doing 45 miles an hour. Warren admits these drones won't withstand a direct hit with a tornado. That's why he wants to intercept them by riding the warm air the tornado sucks up. Our main goal is to tap into the inflow jet of the supercell that's feeding the tornado. On radar, that's what you get, that hook area, um, that inflow notch is what they call it, usually in the southwest corner of the supercell. And so being on the southeast side, we should be able to tap into the inflow jet by one, visually seeing it from the ground, and then two, uh, through radar indication. The data that we're looking for specifically inside of these tornadoes are barometric pressure, relative humidity, and temperature. Meteorologists believe that the pressure drop inside of a tornado has a lot to do with the intensity of the tornado. Knowing those pressure drops may reveal which storms will produce a tornado more accurately to get people out of harm's way. All right, guys, we're good to go. We're also collecting uh, rotational forces using the accelerometer. And so this will help scientists and engineers better understand how debris um, is uh, interacting with the winds inside the, the tornadoes. And that means building better structures. But first, they have to get this drone to work properly and avoid landing on anthills. Oh yeah, covered in ants. <laughs> so right now the problem is when we flip it into the computer stabilized mode, um, it is just kind of flipping upside down and it's like the flight controller doesn't know where it is. So I'm um, gonna have to keep testing. Surprisingly, 
Not all storm chasers support this new idea. Yeah, I'm sure the Wright brothers, you know, had had some uh, haters. You know, that's just fuel the fire and makes us want to get it done even more and oh prove God. the naysayers yeah, wrong. Awesome. And I really think that this project has potential to kind of revolutionize how we study tornadoes. I think the ultimate goal is to better forecast tornadoes, eliminate some of the false alarm rates, uh, also build better structures in tornado prone areas. It's just a matter of safety, bottom line. Beautiful. 